For the past several decades, we have been digitizing our information flow. And lately, we have started digitizing the world at large, interconnecting things that are digital by themselves, but are able to act on the world. This complementary network of networks is the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things has been brewing and is now poised to change the world. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. When you have an object that can calculate, it knows its position, has memory, it can communicate. My friend Bruce Sterling calls it a spine. It is a terminology that hasn't caught on, but I like it. A spine is one node in the Internet of Things. The best and simplest example of a spine is your phone. It can definitely calculate, has memory, can communicate, and it also acts on its environment. In this case, the environment of the phone is you. Your phone acts on you. There are other examples as well. The car is becoming a spine, a node in the Internet of Things. Cars have become ever more digital and they are starting to take over the functions of driving from the human driver in a manner that is increasingly incisive and autonomous. Tesla promised to deliver full self-driving functions to an increasing number of beta testers of its system. And soon it will have incontrovertible numbers to show the superiority of this autonomous driving car to human drivers in avoiding accidents. Digitizing objects means introducing functions in them that make them programmable, make them upgradable, uh, make them so much more flexible and convenient. And it used to be the case that introducing these functions would be very expensive. But today it is extremely cheap. Just with a few dollars you can add all kinds of digital functions to everyday objects using things that are accessible uh, for, to anyone. Arduino boards, for example. And the designers and producers of all kinds of goods have started realizing that it is more convenient to add the spimification to their products rather than producing two different lines, add this function so that they become a node on the Internet of Things to every model they are selling. An example, your television set. If you go out and try to find a TV that is not connectable to the Internet, it is very likely that you will fail. Every television sold on the market today is a smart television. It is up to you if you want to connect it or not, but the functionality is there. This is going to be the case with everything. Have you noticed that when you are checking in a hotel, your key is now a connected device that will tell the door that you are authorized to enter. The door will ask a server 
uh, if you are right and then open itself, doors have become nodes on the Internet of Things. It is important to recognize the difference between those objects that sense and make decisions, but their decisions stay within the digital realm, and those other categories, such as the two examples that I made of cars and doors, where the decisions have consequences in the physical world itself. The supreme example of a node in the Internet of Things that has a consequence in the physical world is represented by humanoid robots. We have had all kinds of industrial robots for decades, and they have been confined in very special environments because they were pretty dumb, blind and dangerous. Uh, they would not recognize if there was a human around, and there have been fatal accidents uh, when uh, their pre-defined movement uh, collided with a human. The next generations of robots are going to be much smarter and much more compatible both with an environment that has evolved around humans as well as with humans themselves in that environment. The announcement by Tesla of their uh, Tesla bot, the humanoid robot that they are supposed to be building and releasing uh, in the coming years, uh, is the most uh, visible and recent example. But there are many other initiatives that are uh, the same. It is evident that these robots will take full advantage of being a node on the Internet of Things. They will be able to interpret the world on their own. If they are disconnected uh, from the network, they will not freeze. They should be able to continue doing what they are doing. But as long as they are connected, their abilities will be multiplied by the way that they can access and use the network. Potentially the most unexpected example uh, of a node uh, in the Internet of Things is what we tend to call the smart city. Smart cities as a concept have been around for some time as well, but the way they were designed and built was top-down. Too many pretended to know what the functionalities and the expectations of applications from the residents of uh, the futuristic city in Seoul or Shenzhen or in the Middle East uh, should be. And then they were surprised when the residents actually wanted something different that the city could not deliver. The successful examples of smart cities will be those that inherit the design principles that drove the Internet itself, where the protocols do not pretend to know what are the applications going to be built on top of them. They provide the maximum freedom for future applications and they are neutral with respect to them, uh, providing their uh, support services for the delivery of these applications to anyone and everyone. These kinds of neutral protocols are going to be needed interoperably and a new generation of designers and developers and app stores uh, are going to be born so that the smart cities on the Internet of Things of the future are flexible, and rich uh, in providing advantages, value to the residents. And yes, of course, spaceships and Martian colonies are going to be born right away with these concepts in mind. And 
Not necessarily and explicitly the term Internet of Things is what is going to be used. Germans, for example, were sufficiently threatened by the American marketing to come up with a different term. They call the Industrial Internet of Things Inter Industry 4.0. Well, fine, why not? They are the same thing though, industrial applications of the Internet of Things. When we started creating the civilization that we are now enjoying 10,000 years ago and more, embracing agriculture was a one-way street. We increased the number of people that a given area of territory could support, but at the same time we became dependent on a set of practices that on the individual level were measurably harmful. We became shorter as a consequence of the lifestyle that we adopted and for a long set of millennia the calories per head available were less than those uh, at hunter-gatherer societies. Today, we are climbing out uh, of the shadow of that decision and we are able to delegate an increasing number of dangerous, repetitive or boring jobs uh, to our machines. The Internet of Things is going to continue delivering the advantage of this trajectory. It is going to make us human again. I actually spoke about this uh, at uh, a conference, I think 12 years ago. You should be able to find that uh, conference talk with this title, The Internet of Things Will Make Us Human Again, if you search online. I also finished uh, recording a, a new course that is part of the Jolting Technologies courses about the Internet of Things. You can check it out on jolting.co. The Jolting Technologies are those that are characterized by an increasing rate of acceleration in their development and deployment, changing the world in a manner that is even harder to characterize, recognize and leverage than before. If you like the episode of the context that you just watched or listened to, you can become a fan, a supporter, a sponsor, or a benefactor on patreon.com slash David Orban. Thank you.